everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about some more reactions that we can perform with monosaccharides. So the first one we'll talk about here is reduction. Now, uh, remember that sugars or monosaccharides have either an aldehyde or a ketone at the top of the open chain form, right? So we have aldoses and ketoses. So both of those could be reduced, and we're going to reduce them using sodium borohydride, which we've seen before. So let's draw a sugar here, or a monosaccharide. And most of the time, again, equilibrium favors the cyclic structure for these monosaccharides, but a small amount will still exist in its open chain form. So let's just draw the open chain form for this monosaccharide real quick. So this is D-glucose, our favorite sugar. Okay, so what we can do is re oops, reduce the aldehyde at the top. And remember, when we talked about ketones and aldehydes, we said that we could reduce ketones and aldehydes using sodium borohydride. I'm just going to clean up my equilibrium arrows over here. Oh, no, nope. wrong direction. So the cyclic form is favored. There we go. Okay, so we're going to react this with sodium borohydride and water, and that's going to turn the aldehyde at the top into just a regular alcohol group. Everything else will stay the same. Okay, so pretty easy, right? Now, notice that only a small amount of the monosaccharides are in their open chain form. But once we start reacting those with the sodium borohydride, then according to Le Chatelier's principle, we're removing product, right? So that's going to favor the formation of products. So we're going to see the cyclic structure uh, monosaccharides changing into open chain saccharides so that they can then go on to re be reduced. All right, so um, let's see, we have, let's just write oh, some names down here. So this is D-glucose and our product is called D-glucotol. Oh, already spelling it wrong, glucotol. So we would call this an aldetol. Okay. Now we can do a similar reaction um, with oxidation. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, D-glucotol is actually found in fruits and berries. And it's actually referred to as sorbitol. Um, so if you've heard of sorbitol before, this is the structure. Okay, so let's look at oxidation. So oxidation, um, instead of turning our aldehyde into an alcohol, we're going to turn it into a carboxylic acid. Now, do you think we can oxidize our ketone. So if we have a ketose, do you think we could oxidize that? No, uh, ketones unfortunately, or ketoses unfortunately will not go through oxidation. So this is only going to work for aldoses. All right, so let's draw our sugar 
And again, we typically find our sugar in the cyclic form at equilibrium. But there is still a small amount in the open chain form. Okay, so now we're going to turn our aldehyde into a carboxylic acid. And do you remember how we did that previously? Do you remember the reagents we would use to turn an aldehyde into a carboxylic acid? Well, there's multiple ways, right, that we could do this. Um, there's multiple ways we could turn that into a carboxylic acid. The reagents that we would typically use for this one in particular is um, uh, bromine and water at a pH of 6. But of course, there's other ways to do it too. Okay, so that's going to turn our aldehyde into a carboxylic acid. So everything else, again, will stay the same. Okay, so let's just highlight the carboxylic acid at the top just to show what changed. So again, our monosaccharide is D-glucose, and then our product here is called D-gluconic acid. And this is also referred to as an aldonic acid. Okay, now remember, uh, we can't really do this for ketoses, um, so monosaccharides that have a ketone at the top. Um, and let's say that you don't know whether you have an aldose or a ketose. There is a test that you can perform to figure out if you do have an aldehyde at the top or a ketone at the top. And that's called the Tollens test. So the Tollens test is going to um, use uh, silver ions in aqueous ammonia. And if you have an aldose, the reaction is going to form a silver mirror on your glassware when everything mixes together. So you can kind of see here, we've got a mirror effect going on inside that reaction flask. If you have a ketose, that reaction does not occur. So we don't get that mirrored effect in the uh, reaction flask. So this is a fun test to do. It's not very useful because you can't really use that piece of glassware <laughs> again, um, but oftentimes chemists will perform this reaction uh, just so they can have that cool mirrored effect in a piece of glassware, and then they might just keep it on a shelf just to, just to show it off. Now there's other uh, tests you can perform as well. Um, so some other tests that you could do, there's, uh, let's see, a test where you use copper ions in aqueous uh, sodium tartrate. Or you can use copper ions in aqueous sodium citrate. And can you guess what color the product will be in that case? Red. So you'll kind of get like a red product, um, like a reddish uh, solid at the end. So we can write that down here. So if you have an aldose, you'll get a reddish precipitate. 
Okay, now what are some other reactions we can do? So the next one is called the kiliani fischer synthesis. Um, or we can just say that this is a chain lengthening reaction. So um, basically two different chemists kind of came up with a way to lengthen the chain of your monosaccharide. So the first chemist was Heinrich Kiliani um, in Germany, and then the other one was Emil Fischer. We've talked about Fischer projections, so that's the same person um, that this is named after. And uh, basically, if you have a monosaccharide, so let's just draw one here, and let's say you want to lengthen the carbon chain here and add another chiral center. What you can do is first add hydrocyanic acid and that's going to replace your aldehyde group with a um, cyanide group. And then the second step involves using hydrogen with um, a poisoned catalyst. So palladium with barium sulfate and also water. Now this is going to give you two products because remember when you add a chiral center, it could either be R or S. So we're going to end up forming two different sugars here. So the first one might look uh, very familiar. This is D-glucose. And the other sugar is D-mannose. So the only difference here is that first, um, or that top chiral center. The OH group is flipped. All of the other chiral centers stay the same. So let's just highlight that. Okay. Now again, if you look at the starting material, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. And if you look at the products, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So we were able to add a whole other carbon to this chain and another chiral center and we produce two new sugars. Okay. Now there's a, we can also do the opposite. We could shorten the chain and that would be called the vol degradation. So this is just the reverse of what we did. Um, so for instance, let's say we wanted to shorten D-glucose. So maybe we wanted a, a different sugar So let's just draw D-glucose again. Again, you're probably going to have the structure of D-glucose memorized by the end of this. Okay, so we're going to use um, a reaction that we've seen previously. So we're going to convert that aldehyde group on the top into an oxime. So we're kind of trying to get to a cyanohydrin. Um, actually, let me shorten my arrow here so I have enough room. Okay, so first we're using NH2OH to convert our aldehyde into that oxime. Everything else stays the same. So we'll just redraw these groups. And let's just highlight what changed here. 
Okay, so now next we're going to acylate uh, by using an acid anhydride. So I'm just going to write that as AC2O. And this will turn our oxime into a cyanohydrin. So we're just turning um, our aldehyde group overall into a cyano group. Everything else stays the same. And then in our last step, we're going to use um, an alkoxide base. And this is going to cause our cyano group to leave. So it's going to take a proton from our top chiral center hydroxy group. That's going to leave electrons behind to form a double bond. So we're forming an aldehyde group again. But in the process, we're losing a carbon from the cyano group. So this is how we shorten the chain. Okay, so now we end up with a new sugar. So now our top chiral center was the second chiral center in the previous reaction. Oh, there we go. My pen didn't want to work for a second there. Okay, so let's highlight. We've got this cyano group, and then we're actually going to turn this blue carbon that I'm highlighting, that first chiral center, that's going to become our aldehyde in the final product. So again, this is just a chain shortening reaction. So you could create all sorts of sugars using these different reactions, either the chain lengthening or the chain shortening reaction. Um, now what's nice about the chain shortening reaction is you only have one product, um, but the yields for this vole degradation are not super high, um, but it is nice to be able to just end up with one product, whereas in the Kiliana or Kiliani Fisher synthesis, we end up with two products, which can be kind of messy and difficult to separate. Um, so, you know, there's pros and cons to all of these different reactions. Okay, so uh, that's it for our reactions section. In the last lecture for this chapter, we'll talk about disaccharides, so two sugars bound together. Um, we'll also talk about polysaccharides. And we'll also just kind of wrap up by talking about N-glycosides, which are really important um, in building up RNA and DNA. So I will see you then.